Welcome everyone to Repla's live SEO audit workshop in partnership with QuickBot. Today, the founder of QuickBot, Robert Battle, will provide free SEO audits for your websites, helping you identify areas for improvement and offering actionable tips for optimizing your online presence. Before I turn it over to Robert, I'd like to quickly introduce Replo. Replo is a visual web development platform that allows teams to create beautiful, high-performance landing pages on Shopify without the need for developers. Replo is light years ahead of other page builders when it comes to customization and page speed. And we have a library of hundreds of proven landing page templates that anyone can use, as well as certified experts who can help build custom pages in just a few days. We'd like to thank Robert for hosting this event and for providing his expertise. And so without further ado, let's dive into the world of SEO and discover how to unlock its true potential. Thank you, Robert. Awesome. So today we're going to do a little bit different approach. Uh, some of the best strategies we've seen from an SEO side actually come from these very large companies. Because the idea is, you know, we don't necessarily have th those big budgets as a smaller brand. So it's always better to actually leverage the competition and mimic their budgets or mimic their A-B testing, really, because you know they put money into it. So first, we're going to cover just a really quick two, three minute intro on what is SEO. And then we're just going to dive into some audits of some of these really big brands in some very competitive industries. So let's get started here. Cool. So what exactly is SEO? SEO mathematically is very simply links plus content uh, and, and by, by links, so they're backlinks. So very authoritative news sources, niche relevant sites. Uh, really any website that is linking back or hyperlinking within their text, within their page, within somewhere on their website to your site. That basically gives you wings effectively and it gives your content wings. The content is the heart and soul of SEO. It, it, Google ultimately is just a large algorithm that just crawls, combs and categorizes or in their terms index your website into their billion plus pages uh, every single day. And whenever Google releases uh, algorithm updates, they're just basically shuffling around the matching of the entities and, and kind of how they view uh, experts, expertise and trust and uh, um, just, just related topics ultimately. So let's just dive into this a little bit further. So we also like to really describe SEO mathematically because it is, it is just a bunch of data that you can actually compute and basically work backwards and reverse engineer. So that's specifically how QuickBot uh, accelerates rankings and really cuts through the noise to provide the most value as soon as we possibly can. So, you know, again, our core focus is gonna be around content. A lot of what we talk about today is gonna be around content. I'd probably say, you know, 70, 80 percent of our business is around the content as well. Because ultimately, a lot of our clients and a lot of, you know, a lot of you guys listening here, you know, you already probably have links. You maybe have a domain rating, which if you don't know what that is, not a problem, of around 20 plus. Uh, and ultimately, that's good enough. You know, as you guys keep scaling up, you're going to basically get these links organically and on your own. So, again, the links we don't focus on because they're naturally occurring and they can also be bypassed by loads of content. Uh, and really hammering what's called topical authority, <clears throat> meaning you blanket every possible question around the topic. Google sees those answers across all your pages. They see everything perfectly interconnected, and they can basically read your website like, like a mind map, and they know that you're an expert over the competition who does not have that content structure. And that's why content is so powerful from an SEO side. Uh, and ultimately, you know, links are a waste of money if you're buying them. Uh, new links should, should ideally be na be acquired naturally, you know, through having good content and having linkable assets such as tools or calculators on your website, uh, really anything that could make sense with your ideal users. And we may talk about that too in a little bit uh, as well. So the other uh, area of also discussion is affiliate links. So basically paying the play for these parasite SEO websites like the LA Weeklies uh, or, you know, even Forbes, Forbes, you know, it costs $5,000 to, to get an article on there, uh, but it's a sponsored post and that's technically a backlink. You know, those pages can also rank on their own uh, because of their standalone area. But I think that affiliate links might be a discussion for another day. So let's keep going. So the SEO timeline, you know, we get asked this a thousand times a day. Uh, the whole the whole question is really, you know, how quickly can I make money off SEO? When is the right time to start doing SEO? And the answer is really based on your personal goals and based on, you know, what you really want out of your website. You know, effectively how it works is you get content posted. That content uh, gets indexed by Google and you start ranking for keywords. Those keywords then drive search impressions, which are if somebody searches for CBD gummies, maybe you're ranked 15, but somebody clicks the second page and boom, you got an impression. They didn't click on you, but they clicked the second page. So, for example, that would be an example of impressions. 
um, you show up in front of somebody. So impressions, quite literally, is brand visibility uh, from Google's standpoint. Those impressions become clicks. You actually move up in the ranks and you become the top three positions and you'll probably get clicked. You know, for the bigger keywords, you might get clicked even on like the eighth position. It's rare, but it could happen. So it's important to note. So not all search terms are equal. Uh, then finally, those clicks then get to your website and then you better have a compelling product. You better be able to, you know, optimize your conversions and make sure that you are really driving the customers to their goal or to your goal of buying the product and to their goal of solving their problem. And that's how you get money. So without further ado, let's basically keep talking about it. The, the bulk of what we want to discuss here today is the content and keywords, uh, because if you do this right, you can basically immediately know that you're on the right track. So how do we do it? Uh, one, you have to apply best practices. Two, like we talked about, we're going to leverage the competition's budget. They can afford A-B testing. They tested a thousand things. Their website is a result of that. They're probably still testing actively. We want to mimic that. We want to keep an eye on the competition and copy them, especially the biggest companies within your niche, within your sector, within your industry, or even uh, you know adjacent industries, adjacent markets. That's, that's super important, you know, really hammering alternative markets. You know, for example, if you sell, you know, energy strips that you put on your tongue and it, it delivers caffeine right straight, you know, to your body. Well, if there's not a lot of search terms there, you should probably be looking at how caffeine gum is done and maybe even comparing and contrasting versus your product versus caffeine gum to try to rank for caffeine gum. Because if you rank for that as an alternative market, people will buy your product because they're already looking to buy caffeine gum. So it's an example. So, and then three, test strategically and track obsessively. If you're not tracking your results and your movement and your metrics, you're doing nothing. You have to make sure that you are testing constantly, you're running multiple tests at all times, and you're just, and you're tracking everything that you possibly can. You know, this doesn't have to be work. You can enjoy this, uh, and I'm gonna show you kind of how to do that. Uh, but again, I think that there's so much value in this, quite literally monetarily, as you guys can watch your, you know, can watch your sales skyrocket. So our goal here today is just to help you maximize your value. So let's get started. A couple of things we want to also cover too. These are some of the more important slides and then we're going to jump into the actual audits. You know, are like, why does our content rank? What, what have we found that actually works at QuickBot? Uh, one, for example, we're going to breeze through this, but URL exact match. URLs are super important. Google is parsing your page and they're just trying to determine what your page is all about. And they do that from looking at your URL. From then from looking at, you know, your H1 and your H2, H3, et cetera. You can, you can reverse engineer this from the competition, uh, but you can effectively also reverse engineer this from Google and make sure that all of your pages, whether it's a product page, collection page, or blog page, is really hammering all these major points after you reverse engineered and then added your own spin to it. And again, your website needs to be crawled structurally. So it needs to be crawled like a spider web, like a mind map. So your product pages are supported by your collection pages, which are supported by your supporting content and then other layers of content. And there's so much value to that. And it, it really shines when you do it right. So cool. The three goals we're going to talk about today for each audit are effectively identifying strengths and weaknesses of websites, identifying the most important keywords and identify competition and prescribed strategy. You know, so let's get started. But one of the more thing, more obvious things is, you know, these brands we're going to hit, you know, they are the competition to a lot of your products. So let's try to extract some strategies from them. Normally, this is how we would approach your site audit for your website. But until then, we're just going to approach it from the competition standpoint, just to get a better idea of what they're doing. So starting out today, I want to cover some brands that I've seen that have just insane SEO that, that are in very competitive fields, niches, uh, and are very effective marketers digitally. So the first one I want to talk about, we have quite a few clients in CBD, uh, and CBD is one of the most difficult areas to rank because every single technique has been fully fleshed out, uh, mostly because of how much money they have, especially for SEO, because they they legally cannot take out Google ads unless they basically create a whole new rebranded page about hemp instead. So because of that, there's a ton of money and testing that is done in the CBD market that we can then basically extract, utilize, and improvise and apply to other areas very successfully. So the first thing we're going to do is all of these audits are going to utilize a site tool, a site explorer tool called Hrefs. And the goal here is just to quantify and visualize uh, the SEO data, the data behind the scenes that's really driving the rankings, that's you know driving everything out there. So let's just drop this in here. We're going to grab Holistic Pets URL. 
drop it into the site explorer of Ahrefs. I think you can get a free trial. Um, they also have very cheap plans, so I highly recommend it. But we're going to use this thing to the maximum today. So obviously, very big brand. You know, uh, just looking at everything else going on, this makes sense. They have a ton of keywords. Their SEO is strong across the board. Uh, they've kind of capped out the market as far as pet CBD. You can Google anything pet CBD, and they're going to rank number one. Cat CBD, dog CBD, whatever, pet, you know, pet oil, CBD oil, what anything, you know, holistic medicine remedy for pets. They are going to rank. And the way that they did it is how I really want to talk about today and where all their traffic is coming from. So step one, when doing these audits for yourself uh, on your own website or doing these audits on the competition, on anybody's site, really, you want to start with the overview 2.0, again, basic. All we want to see here is look at the entire website visualized uh, on like a, like an onion. We can strip down the layers of, of where their where their keywords are ranking. Typically, the 51 plus are ranks 51 and higher, meaning basically like page five through 10, effectively, because this tool only looks at the top 100 ranks. So, anyways, what we're going to be seeing here is how is their new keyword acquisition? You know, are they creating new content that's showing up? Are they doing it right by Google? Is that really coming through properly? Uh, the answer is they probably really tapped this market out. This is going to be the case with a lot of our uh, people we're looking at today because they are the best of the best. So makes sense. And then if, as you kind of like peel the onions, the layer of the onions back, you can kind of see how they're faring on the page one side. Uh, the page one or one through 10 rankings is going to be about as close as you can get to your Google Analytics uh, graph. So like, for example, one through three, their keywords, this is going to look very similar to probably what they're seeing on their own internal organic site uh, traffic. Uh, coming from organic and ultimately their clicks and ultimately their sales. Most likely they're probably just focusing on uh, website conversions now uh, or it's just on autopilot because they're probably making so much money. So let's look at what pages. So this is the whole website, right? Let's look at what pages on their website are driving their SEO. Because to be honest, a lot of websites may maybe only have a few pages that are really moving the needle. These big websites obviously will have a lot of pages. Uh, but in most cases, you know, any moderate sized business that's doing very well organically probably just has a couple products and a couple blogs uh, that are really driving the traffic ultimately. So let's look at this. So what we see immediately. So of all their traffic, of all their pages basically sorted by order of organic traffic. You know, this tool is an estimator. Obviously, uh, they do know what keywords you're ranking for because they're crawling Google multiple times a day you know, for all these different queries. And so they, they're basically estimating traffic, but it's a really good indicator, especially when looked at at scale. So looking at what, I mean, it obviously makes sense that their product page obviously is ranking, is their most their most ranked page. And you know why? Because the product page probably gets all their backlinks. If somebody's going to link to a list of pet, they're probably going to link to their product page. That's the same for all of you e-commerce owners out there. You know, your product pages are the most powerful and typically underused SEO assets. And by that, I mean, uh, for all of you that, you know, pull up your product pages today, you know, look at the number of words you have in your page, use any SEO plugin. And what you're going to find is you probably have less than a thousand, uh, which is ridiculous because that's just such wasted opportunity, especially of your flagship product, the one that probably gets all of your links going to it. I mean, look at them. The 5,000 words, you know, why? Because they're covering every possible question, all possible topics, dosage, you know, uh, what can CBD oil do for my dog? How does it work? You know, is this product right? How do I know it's right? How do you know that your CBD oil is quality? Hammering all these freaking questions. And honestly, if you Googled CBD for pets, which is probably their main keyword they're going for, Google will tell you right down here, wait for it. People also ask section, maybe I missed it. There we go, boom, this is very small. If you keep it clicking this and expanding this, they will show you exactly what you know keywords you wanna use, uh, what, what really, what headings you wanna use on your product pages even. So does CBD actually work? Does it, does it calm dogs? Do vets recommend it? How fast does it kick in? Uh, let's look at their page again. So, and look at the questions here. Uh, which, which products are right for my dog? You know, what do I look for in good teachers? How is it made? You know, why are we choosing our brand for, for this? You know, it's very classic. Best CBD oil for dogs. You better believe that heading on this page is solely to rank for best CBD for dogs. The reason we talked about heading structure in the earlier slides is because headings are so important. They help Google distill the page, uh, really understand what your page is about. Your page is a collection of your, of your URL and your headings. 
the words inside of that of those headings are way less important than what people want to think. I know, apologies, all you copywriters out there. Uh, they're not that important. The headings are super key for SEO. And what's the point of your e-commerce site? To get sales. How do you do that? By bringing more customers. How do you do that? Through SEO, through ads, through email marketing, whatever. You know, a lot of these other avenues are designed for user experience. Uh, but SEO and utilizing your pages properly, that's des- that's just designed to really rank ultimately. And look at where they put a lot of this, a lot of these these words, right? They put it underneath the reviews, near the very bottom of the page. This is exactly what we do for our clients. And you know why? Because no one's going to scroll down here. And if they do, it's going to look good. It's still going to have everything. Uh, and, they, you know, they use these collapsible accordions, which you can do as well on your pages with Replo. But no one's going to really scroll down here. Uh, but this page is going to rank for every single one of these keyword and terms. And what's going to happen is if Google's looking uh, for who the expert on pet CBD is, how are they going to find it? The page that has the most links and the page that has the most answers to everyone's questions. You know, there's a reason it's called people also ask. So if you if you also answer all of these answers on one page, you're going to crush it. And that is that is a that's a hack for SEO. Utilize your product pages, especially the ones that are getting the most links to them. And you can see that as well. If you go here, uh, you can if, if you have access to the site structure, you can look that at that way to figure out your on your own what pages have the most links. Uh, but I can pretty much guarantee you this page, for example, probably the majority of their links come from their CBD oil for dogs product page. Boom. Look at that. Referring domains. So they have 723 websites rank, like basically connected to that page. Uh, we can even we can even go deeper and look at exactly, you know, what what specific websites are linking to that page, how and why. And this goes into like backlink optimization and uh, really kind of making sure that you that you move the needle with, with links ultimately. So let's check this out really quick. So first of all, is this even the right website? Hold on just a second. Oh, drops. Okay, yeah, so this is exactly it. So let's take this. I want to see all the links that are going into here. So we're going to go over referring domains. We're going to put this bad boy in there. And look at that. we got the 300 domains. But so this is what, what we want to see, though. Not all domains linking back to your site, not all backlinks are created equally. You know, there's multiple ways to have very strong backlinks. You can have niche relevance or you can have, you know, topical relevance and uh, sorry, topical authority. Like niche relevance is like a CBD site linking to this this pet CBD or a dog site, uh, you know, a dog owner's site, a medical, a, a veterinary site for dogs linking back to, you know, holistic pet. That's niche relevance. So you can have a lower domain rating, but it will have a lot of, you know, energy and power. and It'll be great. The other way to do it, the other other side of it, which, again, a natural link profile has a pretty decent portion of both of these types, uh, w- it would technically be like news sources like Forbes, you know, like um, L.A. Weekly, you know, all these different, you know, local news sites, bigger news sites, the Tennessean for anyone in anyone in Tennessee. But, you know, any of these literally any of these news sites. So there's multiple ways to get these really powerful links. But we only care about if we're analyzing what's moving the needle. Uh, Google has basically told us that they really only care about do follow links. So let's keep filtering this down. So on this page, they had 300 links. I only want do follows, 242 of the 300. That's a pretty high average. So I have to believe they're buying a lot of these. A lot of these are purchased. Uh, so they reach out and they basically, you know, buy a sponsorship post. That's definitely Orlando Magazine. I mean, definitely all these, like literally. But let's look at <clears throat> their 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 top keyword on this page, CBD oil for dogs. So they rank three on it. It's probably I'm actually going to look at their all their keywords here and find the most valuable one because that's going to be what they're ranking. And we're going to search all these links for that anchor text, find exactly which ones they're buying. So these this is a good way for you guys to basically you're going to build your own backlinks to identify the publications you should be reaching out to and asking, hey, how much does it cost for a link ultimately? Uh, because that's that's a great way to do it. So. Let's just see here really quick, sorting by volume. So CBD oil. So let's just start there because if we do CBD oil, uh, it'll also hit CBD oil for dogs, which is great. So I'm going to use actually all three of these keywords basically, but we'll do CBD oil and CBD for dogs. Uh, That'll be good. So let's go in here. Let's go back to the referring domains. And I'm going to filter for uh, anchor text. And it's going to be any rule. It's going to be CBD oil. And it's going to be CBD for dogs 
and it's going to be CBD oil for actually, I guess we technically already got that. So let's just leave those and apply. See what comes up. So of these 242, how many do we get that uses any of the rules? Oh, look at that, 150. These are definitely purchased, like no doubt about it. If I'm going to buy a link, I'm going to make the I'm going to make an exact an exact anchor text basically, uh, because why not? If you have control over that because you paid for it, you're going to want to choose your keyword that's the most valuable. So they're doing here. Every single one of these could be should could and should be reached out to. If you have a pet, if you have a pet, you know, CBD company or really any any pet company, um, it looks like a lot of this is a lot of hemp based, so wouldn't make sense for a normal pet company. But you guys get the idea. You can do this with any of your competition. Uh, it's very simple and it's a really good way to, to see what's going on. If you want to see what they're doing recently, you just click new and they probably have a few, maybe. Yeah, they've got three. So these are most recently added, which is interesting. You can, you can even look at the article and how they're linking it. Uh, look at that. Everything you should know about dementia and dogs. Uh, I guarantee you they bought this uh, because they're trying to rank for that from a parasite SEO standpoint, probably. And look at that. Let's see. This is what is this? Can I dementia? Where does this link go to? Okay, vet.cornell. So interesting. They're probably they probably also bought this link, Holistapat, and linking back as well. So there's just such a deep strategy in all of this. Um, but but I think you guys can kind of get the idea of you know specifically how, how you really move the needle here with backlinks. So uh, if I was you guys, you know, I would do this on your competitors. I would look at who's ranking number one for the tier terms that you want. Look at their do follow domains, reach out to these websites, for example, once you do this search uh, and just basically try to try to try to like look on LinkedIn, try to find their lead publisher, try to find the author of some of these blogs, reach out to them and basically ask, how can you become a part of that of that article? You know, offer something up like your expertise and a quote uh, you offer to write an article for them, whatever. That's really good, easy ways for you guys to market yourselves. So that is just a quick uh, deep dive into backlinks, which I didn't expect to go into, but it gets the idea. So let's keep going here. Let's go back to the top pages. It's a nice big tangent. But what else? What else is helping them rank? Let's look at you know their different areas here. Um, okay, dog breeds, American Akita. Let's check out that page. This page has a ton of their search traffic. Oh, this is interesting. It is just about the different type of dog. Oh, and it's just about. The size, personality, exercise, training, history, health problems. And if we Google American Akita, which they're clearly trying to rank for or trying to build topical authority on, you can see that these are the same question. Disadvantages, advantages, are they aggressive? Uh, are they nicer? Are they high risk? What are their health? Basically, what are their intelligence? Uh, what are their skills? Are they good with kids? Boom. All that's probably covered on this page. And look at this, December of 2022. So this was done. This was done. You know, done or updated last year, basically, uh, which makes sense because what I, what I'm seeing here is if you keep looking at these top pages, a lot of these are cat breeds, dog breeds. So what are these pages? Let, let's just look at how much of their traffic is coming from these pages. Uh, let's look at URL. We'll just look up cat breeds. We're just we're just filtering this and dog breeds. Boom. Oops. Should be any rule. Done. Apply. Search. And of their 636 pages, 173 of them are coming from these breed pages. So why would they create all these different types of cat breeds and dog breeds? Well, it's an easy answer, actually. Topical authority. If you look at these pages. They basically spun up unique pages for every single breed of cat they could find. Most likely, every single searched breed of cat. And interestingly enough, they probably are basically going down the list and updating these and adding new ones, you just kind of, you know, on their own. But this is brilliant. This is establishing massive topical authority. It's also basically showing that if somebody's searching, you know, for holistic medicine for a Toyger cat, guess who's going to rank this freaking company? So that's insane. Insane amount of, you know, land grabbing and really just using, using, ultimately, you can even use AI to spin these pages up. So using AI potentially to spin up a lot of pages at once, all around different types of you know cat breeds, dog breeds. Uh, if you're if you are you know running a pet website, if you're running any type of website, find the topic that is one above yours or the you know the, the topical entity. So for example, we were auditing, uh, which we're about to cover actually as well, um, a a like 
uh, like a dental brand, like they do like whitening strips, et cetera. So what is the step above that at a topical level that if you talked about everywhere, Google would assume and know you're an expert on the topic and you, they would rank you. Well, dental hygiene, you know, dental uh, dentistry, ultimately, you know, what like gum health, uh, tartar control, et cetera, you know, different alternatives to teeth whitening. You know, all of that could easily fit inside of a glossary and really boost topical authority and also boost page rankings. So super important. But I mean, that's literally what they're doing. So the big takeaways are how you can weaponize your product pages by adding content to the bottom of the page. Write an entire blog about the one keyword you want that page to rank for and just put it at the very bottom. Throw some fancy on-brand images in there. You, know, you can even use AI to spin it up. Just do it carefully. Make sure that the content's quality. Make sure it makes sense and make sure it's structurally placed properly and strategically on your product page. Then spin up a ton of pages that make sense with all possible questions around the topic the greater topic of your brand, whatever you're selling, do that because it works very well for these other companies. Cool. I think that's enough about CBD and dog medicine. So let's let's close these out and let's go to the next one. And so what we can do here as well is we can basically just uh, we can basically just go through and look at all the different top brands that Replo is showcasing uh, specifically on their brand page and kind of and just click around and go that direction. So let's look at, we're, let's cover Liquid IV real quick. Let's see what they're doing. So Liquid IV, everybody knows them. I mean, you know, if you're a weekend warrior, you certainly know about Liquid IV. Uh, I keep a full stock in my pantry at all times. They're beautiful. So let's see what they're doing from an SEO side. Everybody knows they spent a ton of money on marketing. They just launched themselves into the stratosphere by doing so. But how are they also? How did how did they do it from an SEO side? You know what is really what is really moving the needle for them? So let's 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 check it out. So let's grab their website, Liquid IV. Let's put it right here. Let's take a look. Let's do the same thing. Let's just look at their content. Look at what pages are driving their traffic, and go from there. Really. Um, so their SEO side looks pretty strong. Ooh, definitely strong. Yeah. So they really benefited from a recent uh, core update. So. That means what they're doing is great. You know, they're really putting out the proper content, the proper structure. You know, whatever they're doing is doing well. We want to figure that out. Let's look at their secret sauce. Now we're gonna look at the same thing. Look at their top pages, their keywords. I call this like a macro to micro approach. We get the website from a macro perspective, and we dive deeper into the micro perspective. So going further into it, let's look at all the pages. So one thing that's interesting are so they're they're all collect their their main collections page is actually ranking higher than anything else, which is interesting, probably because it just does rank for liquid IV. Uh, looks like obviously you know their lemon lime product is going well. Ingre they have ingredient pages, and they have all their articles. So we're gonna do a couple things. First, I want to look at the referring domains off of this. Yeah, 105 onto this page versus their home page of 1.6k. That makes sense, but versus their product page. Of 158. Okay, let's look at for another collection page. Maybe they have one. Oh, I don't think they do actually. Oh, there we go. There's one. All hydration. So yeah, 16. So it makes sense. So it's just interesting that their collections page. This is classic Google just kind of ranking a page randomly because every Shopify site has this exact page. So it's pretty interesting. So let's take a look at their product page really quick. Let's look at their words on that page. Let's just see what they got going on, and look at how they're approaching it. Let's see here. Wait just a second. Okay, so 1,100 words. Their heading structure is not great. Uh, this is really ranking because of their hype, because of their diverse traffic structure, uh, and also, and also just because they're Liquid IV. Ultimately, um, this is their main page, and also from backlinks. Most likely, this is really coming in from the backlink standpoint. I mean, they've got a ton. They've got 158 very strong referring domains going to that page directly. Which let's look at their site structure really quick and to see if that is truly like a lot, you know, when compared to their other pages, basically, <clears throat> to get an idea. It is their main product. I mean, think about how Google, uh, what Google's trying to do is trying to show what people are looking for to the masses. So if someone's looking for Liquid IV, they're looking for the product page, you know, period. So that's probably why that page is doing so well. But like looking at referring domains, right? Uh, they're, they're, you can tell easily their products has the most referring domains and of all their products, go figure the lemon lime one time package, which is pretty poor site structure to be honest, uh, has, a, has the highest referring domains easily. 
and so does the multi packs, which is interesting. And do we see the multi packs as well in this traffic page? Multi packs. We can take a look at that in a second too, but I'm surprised we don't. I would think it'd be there. But oh, multiplier. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So they are showing up just in different areas. Okay. Anyways, let's look at their articles. Let's look at their pages. And whenever I say articles, I'm just saying that because that's their site structure. So since we know they put all their blogs here, we can just search and filter down for the URL that has the word articles in it because we know that that's going to be all their blogs. That's their uh, taxonomy of their website. Check it out. So 180 pages that are ranking, uh, 6.2 thousand uh, visitors per month on average. Let's look at it again overall and let's go back to it. So, uh, uh, so of all their pages, you know, they have 300 pages, 174. So most likely these pages are helping them out with topical authority. But probably this, this site's the most powerful, just mostly due specifically to um, their backlinks. But we'll see that in a second. Let's see. Boom. Importance of hydration for a pregnant nursing woman. Liquid IV while pregnant. What other keywords is page ranked for? Yeah, a, a ton. So I guarantee you this is designed for the reason of, of ranking for, for literally, you know, hydration uh, for pre while pregnant. So it looks like, let's filter by volume really quick. <clears throat> yep, how much water to drink pregnant? Uh, how much water to drink when pregnant? Dehydration in pregnancy. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. They're basically targeting a lot of those keywords. So checks out. Uh, they basically just use keyword research to figure that out. Probably their internal SEO team cranked out the article. They're probably doing a ton of these articles all at once. Uh, or uh, basically all the time, and just some of them will rank, some of them won't, basically. So look at this. So actually, we knew that dehydration was one of the big things there. Uh, look at this, common causes of dehydration. One of their other big ones, uh, how to keep your children hydrated at school because of because of hydration. So in the hydration pattern. So what we're seeing here is their content strategy. They basically determined that if they hammer dehydration and hammer the, the problem, then their product is going to rank as a solution. And that's super important, really, really important to note that because that's exactly how you guys should structure your content. You know, you are the solution to everyone's problems. They just don't know that you exist. And that's why it's really important to nail all these topics. Excuse me. Most likely, they've been doing this for a long time. So they have absolutely insane levels of authority because they've been covering all possible causes of dehydration all possible situations. And so whenever Google crawls their site, I mean, specifically 180 of these possibilities, whenever Google crawls their site, you know, they see that they're the experts on dehydration. So anything related to those keywords, they're going to rank for. Uh, and that plus coupled with their insane backlink, you know, uh, profile, it's, they're, they're to the moon. So makes sense. I mean, you can keep looking at these. I mean, a lot of these don't really have a lot of traffic, but it doesn't matter because every single piece of content that you create on your site is dual purpose. You know, there's a, there's probably like a 20% chance that a piece of content you create is going to become like your like a, a, a truly br drive traffic driver for SEO. So it's low. So one out, of, one out of every five pages is going to actually rank and do very, very well. So as long as you're creating every page as a dual purpose, meaning that if it doesn't rank, it doesn't really help you out there. It's going to help your other pages rank because it's covering a different set of questions, a different angle a different category, different topic within your topical authority. So for example, you know, what are electrolytes? You know, by all accounts, that should rank pretty well. Uh, but it's probably helping them rank higher for dehydration because electrolytes are an important solution to dehydration. So by having the what, what is article around electrolytes, that does help them boost out their rankings for dehydration because that's how Google is basically mapping these entities together. Uh, a really good way to see this is, let's check it out real quick. Let's do dehydration. Google, you can actually see this a lot whenever you look at right here. Boom. It literally tells you what, what they're mapping. So treatment, effects, signs, symptoms in women, causes, symptoms in adults. If you go to images as well, it also gives you right here. It shows you a lot of different things that they're relating. Uh, entity mapping, how they're really mapping their entities to this different search. So dehydration, it, they're talking about skin. Obviously, water. Is it severe? You know, what solutions basically? Does that, can you see in the face? You know, uh, in your tongue, your dry skin, child, baby, et cetera. You can keep going. Heat exhaustion, treatment, fluid. Uh, I mean, this gives dry mouth. This gives you an idea of what Google is associating with this keyword. 
So if we hammer these topics and cover all of our content around these different topics, all focused around hydration, hydration in children, hydration in babies, you know, effects of dehydration on dry skin. Uh, what does your tongue look like when it's dehydrated or versus hydrated? You know, if you cover all these different topics, you will rank. You will rank. It's just a matter of time, a matter of Google indexing your pages. And if Google's not indexing your pages, then you do backlink outreach to get the backlinks to then cause your pages to be indexed. So that is that is literally the core of uh, of SEO. So cool. I think we crushed that. I think that was a really simple one. Uh, the big takeaway from Liquid IV is you know weaponize your product pages uh, absolutely to a degree that if your brand is all based on one product, then drive a ton of links to that one product. Because if someone's going to be searching for your brand, they're going to want to find your product. Uh, secondly, you know, make sure your content is talking about the problem because you are the solution. And every single page you write is basically planned out and is built around the idea of your major problem you're solving and is really hammering all top types of alternatives, um, symptoms, causes, solutions, science, whatever. You are hammering that. And you can do that working by working backwards from the keywords or you can do that by just looking at the competition sites and what they've done to work and then fill in the gaps because you, of course, have to do more than what they've done in order to rank and higher and outrank them. Cool. Big takeaways there. Next site, let's cover another one here that I found called Byte Toothpaste Bits, which, again, I found off the Replo uh, libraries and brand page. So probably a big brand. I personally haven't heard of them, um, but let's check them out. Let's check them out real quick. And maybe we can also do all birds as well because I do love their products. So let's do this first. Bite to, uh, bite toothpastebits.com. Okay, already pulled it up. Great. So let's look at that. So their keywords are going straight up and it looks beautiful. Yeah, so Google's loving what they're serving. This is important to note. So whatever they're doing, they're doing it right. Let's let's dive into that. Uh, let's Let's start actually here with the site structure. So you go up here and click on that. Let's look at their site structure and how they really have it set up. So they've got all their backlinks going here. When you're looking at site structure, you're really looking to follow the, the backlinks, really. Let's look at the blogs. Let's just see what kind of how they have this set up. And they've got a bunch here, a whole bunch here, actually. That'll be interesting. Not a lot of them have links. It's okay, but a lot of them have a little bit of traffic, which is great, and a bunch of keywords. Interesting. Let's look at their products. Let's look at their pages. So they have a ton of products, wide slate of products, a whole lot of products. Uh, but the majority of them are to their flagship product, which looks like mini mint toothpaste. Okay, noted. Uh, yep, basically just mint toothpaste and whitening. Cool. Cool, okay. And then variations. What are these pages? Why are there so many links? Okay, ingredients. Interesting. Sustainability is pretty big. Okay, cool. So. Easy enough. Looks like a pretty decent normal website. Let's take a look at their pages now. Let's go a little bit deeper. Let's look at their top pages. So now we know basically what products they're pushing. They again, like all of their e-commerce stores, have a lot of backlinks going to their product. So they're probably well known for one of their products, which is obviously their mint toothpaste. So this is interesting. A lot of their traffic is going to their homepage. This typically happens when Google is confused and doesn't know what exactly to rank. But this is an insane uh, disparity, actually. But you can see this here most recently because it looks like they've always been ranking their homepage. But if you look closer at this graph, so this is just all the different pages, you can see where their product pages are actually definitely on the rise. So let's remove this. Most recently, actually. So what are these two pages? Mint toothpaste and whitening gel. These two pages alone are probably what is driving a lot of the growth uh, oh, and the home page, and the home, and the home page, quite literally, uh, the, the growth in their overall traffic trends. So let's look at just the keywords off the home page that are new. Let's look at also the same thing on the mint toothpaste and go that direction. So keywords off the home page only, because what are they doing there? And that's working. So they probably refresh their page. Uh, they rank for bite, which is pretty interesting. Uh, probably, I mean, that's, that's interesting. Mint Dentistry, Crest Toothpaste. Oh, they lost that. So let's look at, let's look at their new and improved over the past month. Just to look, look at, just look at what they're doing, right? So what, what is pouring in that's brand new and how are they ranking up? So Best Toothpaste, that's a pretty big one. Let's look at the trend on that. Yeah. Okay. Better and better. So that, that checks out. So they're doing great. 
uh, water pick as an alternative. It's a, it's a, you know, it's probably a competitor more or less. Let's look at that homepage. This homepage is killing it, whatever they're doing. They probably just refreshed it or updated it within the past month, which is probably why everything is ranking so highly. Uh, very little words. But if you look at their headings, basically talk about everything that they're, that they're, that they're basically selling. Whitening gel, interesting. Oh, did it say updated on here? Let's see. Nope, it does not. Okay. They, they don't have a t uh, meta description. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, no, this would actually be a pretty good candidate uh, just for further optimization because clearly Google's liking whatever they're doing and it's definitely not traditional optimization. So let's then look at their other pages here. Uh, where do we go? Oh, over here maybe. Yes, okay. So I want to see I want to see their other keywords across their whole site. I want to see everything. And then we're going to look at their product page and we're just going to dive deeper into that. So let's look at all of their new and improved and what where those pages are coming from. Let's take a look at that and then we'll look at their content actually. So it looks like a lot of it sorting by volume first and a lot of their change. So the homepage is just killer, which leads me to believe that it might be like a backlink thing too, to be honest. Uh, these are just a ton of new keywords. And I imagine that if we go to their referring domains, a lot of these keywords are going to be anchor texts coming in from other sources. So potentially they just have a big, big outreach type of campaign or really focusing heavily on PR, most likely. Um, let's just see here. New past 30 days of their 1.2 thousand domains. Okay, we've got 30 with just big boys. You know, interesting. Let's look at anchor text distribution real quick. So, oh, internal anchors. Not outgoing links. <clears throat> Anchors, boom. Okay, let's look at new. Last 30 days. Yep, chewable toothpaste. I know that we saw organic keywords, uh, chewable somewhere and tablet somewhere. Here we go. Oh, wait, I just saw it. I lost it. But you get the idea. Uh, let's see. Let's look at the last six months because a lot of these links are probably coming to fruition. Uh, it looks, I mean, just across the board, a whole bunch of different pieces non slip toothpaste. Uh, tablet brand, so stuff like that. All of these anchor texts between the content and the backlinks, that's what's really pushing the needle and causing them to rank up so high. This mint toothpaste and whitening gel, though, it's just really interesting. These are new pages, right? So new pages. Are they maybe they did a website rebrand? Not sure, but interesting. So they don't have a lot of content on this page, but yet it ranks so highly probably from the backlinks, which is interesting. But let's also take a look at their blogs, because if you look at all of their all of their pages, their blogs do pop, pop up, and their blogs are driving quite a bit of traffic. Let's take a look at that. So URL, blogs, something is going on that's basically caused them to rip. Most likely, they just basically did a refresh across their site, if I had to guess, and that probably cleaned up a lot of their technical issues, and probably also just did some fancy rebranding, which was probably coupled with a PR push which makes sense with, you know, why that everything is moving in the right direction, especially even after the Google algorithm updates. So, um, again, they have 111 pages that are all devoted to blogs. Let's look at all their pages again one more time. 209. So half of their website is basically blogs. Checks out. Very common. So all you e-commerce owners that don't have a blog, just get one. Just spin it up. Spin up all these different SEO terms. Copy the competition's pages. I mean, use a use a free trial of Ahrefs to figure out what you should write about and just absolutely crush it. Use AI. Edit it with humans, though. My biggest recommendation. And make sure you kill all those people also ask questions in every single article. Look at what they're doing. Best non-mint toothpaste. You know, that's the non-mint toothpaste. That's what they're trying to rank for. They crushed it. Uh, so not only, it's funny that that's even a keyword. So that they clearly have an SEO researching that. Uh, because they rank highly for mint toothpaste. So it makes sense that they would also rank for not mint toothpaste. Uh, pretty interesting there, though. It's like they got deodorant. They're also selling. Um, pretty interesting. So a lot of what they're trying to talk about is sustainability. Uh, looks like they're kind of across the board with what they're ranking, but they definitely hammered all things toothpaste. Like, let's just look at how many of these 101 pages have the words toothpaste in their URL. 
Probably a lot. Let's see. My guess is maybe 20, 20 or 30. Oh, wait. Oh, because their, their website ranks for toothpaste. Classic. Okay, let me change that. Let's make it this. A little minus. Let's see, let's see if that works. 12th. Okay, interesting. But that also puts toothpaste before. So let's also do toothpaste after. Like that. Let's look at that. Oh, it's going to be zero because we got to do any rule. So 118, which is interesting. Yeah, look at that. 118. Oh, gotcha, because it's also pointing the blogs. Let's kill that. The total blog is 118. And then let's look at, yeah, so 21. Exactly. That's what I expected. So that checks out. Um, and if you look at this one, the, uh, that's their product, obviously, is what's ripping. But look at all the different pages they basically spun up. And they started spinning up new pages, a lot of new pages, actually. So let's look at uh, keywords, improved. And then we'll do status new in a second. So 14 of these are going up. Let's look at status new. Seven. Beautiful. Let's remove this one. Boom. Okay. So they're spinning up a lot of new blogs and products and collections all about the different toothpaste. They're definitely going through a site rebrand easily. So pretty interesting. Uh, but this goes to show how spinning up pages is so effective. The more pages you have on your site, the better, uh, whether that's variations of your product and make sure that each of those pages is being optimized, whether it's blogs, making sure you're really grabbing every possible question and answer across the board in the product. Uh, that also gets the job done there too. So cool. We have just enough time left. Let's talk about all birds because I'm very curious on them. Let's check them out. So let me close some of these tabs here. Let's do, let's check out all birds. So what have they done? What are they doing? And does Google like them still? That's our question we want to answer right here. All right. They're going to have a killer domain rating, something insane probably. Yep, 79, looking great. Mass amount of keywords. Looks like they've tapped the market out, and they're not doing as nearly as hot as they were. They basically got halved since last September. Interesting. So let's look at their page one rankings really quick. Patreon rankings hold strong. That's totally fine. Uh, most likely probably what happened is they capped out the market. This is, again, representative very closely of their actual Google Analytics probably uh, coming from organic traffic. So this means it's probably holding steady. So they're probably not optimizing too much because it's whatever they're doing is working. So let's do the same thing here. Top pages, organic keywords. Both pages, spare pages, 921. Just keep that in mind. Whenever this loads. In the meantime, let's look at organic paid traffic, keywords. Here we go. Come on. Okay, collections. Yep. Different collections. So I think their collections are probably some of their bigger, their bigger pages, it looks like, which is interesting. So if you have a lot of variations of products, I'm looking at all you clothing and apparel brands, your collections are your bread and butter. You know, where we just talked about earlier with the different brands that have flagship products. Uh, you know, that are like, they're, they're what, like Liquid IV, for example. They have the one product page that rules them all. For you companies that have a lot of different products, period, apparel, whatever, um, hammer the collection pages. Think of your collection page like a mini website. So all of your links should go to your collection page. Because if your links go to the collection page, then all of your product pages associated with that collection in proven ranking. And there's so much power and, and beauty in that, especially as you keep spinning up new products. You drop the new product in the collection that's doing so well, and next thing you know, that product gets taken off very quickly. So it's really, really powerful. Um, but also just to note, if Google's already ranking your products highly and not your collections, it's really hard to shift that. That's more of a long-term game. Um, so still focus on it and just focus on spinning them up. Um, but if you're already ranking your collections, then you're doing, you're doing a great job there. So also where we see collections shine too is on like plural search intent, meaning if someone's looking for sneakers, plural, or men's shoes, plural, not like the best men's shoe or men's shoe or a pair of flip flops or a pair of sandals, right? It'd be sandals, plural. That it's You really got to match the search intent, which you see if you just Google it, right? If you Google it, you're going to see if people are what pages are ranking. If it's a collection page, it's a product page, whatever it is. Um, you'll know pretty quickly.
So let's look at their site structure over here. And then we'll, then we'll look at their keywords. So what are they doing right? So vast majority of their, oh, interesting. So a lot of their domains, or a lot of their referring domains go to their products, but yet their collections rank higher. So this is actually an important, important point. This also talks, talks to you about how Google operates, right? If people are looking for shoes, plural, it's probably going to be the collection page that they rank automatically. If you find Google's ranking different pages of your site that do not make sense, you know, if you're an apparel brand and they're ranking a single sweater, and they're not ranking your sweater collection or, you know, your outdoor collection, whatever, uh, that's going to be a mismatch and you're never going to rank on page one. So something is going wrong there and you basically need to over optimize your main page you want to rank and de optimize the ones you don't want to rank ultimately. So let's put for thought. You have to match the search intent to break into page one, period. So, but look at what they've done here. They have using exact match URLs to target all the different topics people are looking for women's shoes, men's shoes, women's loungers, men's runners. You know, there is no mistake that this isn't just some sort of taxonomy that their marketing department created. Uh, for no reason. These are all exact match keywords. Men's mizzles. I don't know what a mizzle is, but maybe it's like something running related. Um, so maybe that's also a keyword. Who knows? Okay, apparently it's a water repellent shoe. So that, that could be their brand. It could be something else. What I would recommend though, actually, um, if mizzle is, is not, so I would not, is mizzle a type of shoe? Let's check really quick. M-I-Z-Z-L-E. Okay, okay, gotcha. So light rain. So that's interesting. Um, so that might be something they created as a brand. You can, you can call that out all day long on your, on your actual page for user experience. But if you're creating words and creating, you know, your own brand lingo, use that on the copy on the page. Do not use that in the URLs. Use the, use whatever you're trying to target as a keyword exactly in the URLs. This is so important. Uh, you can, you can optimize your page for it, uh, for, you know, the, the new keyword that you created. Like, for example, if, if a Mizzle shoe is, uh, you know, their own thing they're trying to do. It's going to be all over their page. But do not put that in the URL. Uh, put, you know, men's shoes, water, put waterproof men's shoes. That should be the URL ultimately. But again, no, men's hiking shoes, just like that, like straight up. So they're doing very, very good here. Best for traveling women's shoes. Done. Uh, it makes sense. You guys get the idea. URLs are very, very powerful. Cool. So last thing I want to look at here are just their keywords. So let's say that you also had a shoe, you're selling apparel, whatever. Look at your competition's keywords and let's let's filter through these big boys and let's find keywords you can grab easily. Keywords that you can actually rank for. And obviously you don't have the same authority as all birds, but you can easily steal keywords from them uh, on their on the very easy low difficulty keywords. So of course you're not going to be able to rank for these probably anytime soon, but you can rank of their 72,000 keywords, some very easy ones. Let's go KD, KD, keyword difficulty, which is basically just a logarithmic scale from zero to 100, 100 being the most competitive um, for really a competitive scale. So let's do show results. So we wanna see KD up to 10, anything less. And look at these, um, track shoes, that's a banger. Um, white hoodie, also, also a killer. Quarter zip, black flats, even even calling out you know these different companies Nike joggers right like you can still put that in your URL still talk about Nike joggers uh, but ultimately compare them to your product and then rank your product for that page so pretty interesting this gives you an idea like this is your zero this is interesting APL Airwalk you see this a lot pretty commonly with the other brands that are ranked highly but notice that these other brands are ranking on their homepage super powerful like this is. This is a this is a really good strategy because they're they're so popular, right? These are probably affiliate articles uh, where they link to Allbirds. They also link to APL sneakers or to Airwalk shoes, um, and that's what's giving that's what's giving them those rankings, basically. Black sneakers, women, killer keyword. If you sell anything like that, you should create up a whole a whole product page or collection page on those. Um, if you have a bunch of types of shoes. You know, create a collection page that the URL is slash black minus sneakers minus women. Done. Optimize it for that, um, and you would absolutely crush it. So let's let's do this one really quick. White Mountain Shoes. So let's say you wanted to spin up a page on that and steal this keyword. Then let's look up uh, Mountain Shoes, and then let's go to the people also ask. 
So if it is a collection page, that's fine. Spin it up as a collection page, target the exact uh, exact URL, and then go down to people also ask when you put it in Google and answer every single one of these questions and put it at the very bottom of your collection page as an FAQ, uh, and this is going to crush it. You're going to rank so fast. It doesn't rank, build some backlinks. You find those backlinks by looking at whoever's ranking right now for that and looking at what publications are linking back to them and just doing outreach and seeing if you, if you, see if you can get a free link, basically. So... Okay, guys, we went into a whole lot today about all kinds of different areas. Um, again, you guys know where to find me. If you have any questions at all, I'm, I'm, I'm in the SEO channel of the Replo chat. Um, you, can, you can reach out to me by email at robert at quickbuy.com. More than happy to do a free site audit on anybody's website that's looking at this video. Uh, just shoot me a note. Uh, you can sign up on our webpage at quickbuy.com as well. Just book some time and our marketing team will get back to you and you know we'll get something set up and we'll go through your site. 